I've, I've read these aphorisms twice. I've really enjoyed them. You know, great stuff. So what are, they? Said, oh, what are they? Are they your aphorisms? When you say original aphorisms, do you mean you thought them up? Quite right. Well, that's good. These aphorisms okay. form... This book, Wisdom and Wordplay, is just a taster, Stanley. Yeah. I, I hope you like the taste. Yeah, I um, do. This is one hundredth part, one hundredth part of my, of my total sort of oeuvre, if you'll ex excuse a French word. Okay, so this is, this is very, very good. So this isn't a collection of, you know, obit dicta, you know, which you've culled from different parts of the world. It is not. And put together. This is your own invented aphorism. Every single one. Everything in that Well, I think that is a pretty, you know, remarkable achievement. Because, you know, we always used to, we, you know, we used to Oscar Wilde and we used to famous last yeah. words, but you have produced this whole thing. And well, well done you. Most books of aphorisms, as you rightly yeah. indicated, or hinted, men's are compilations of dead men's work, yeah. starting at so with Sophocles, yeah. Confucius, right up, yeah. to, up to the present time, to, to Noel Coward. These are all from one person. Well, invite, those of you who have not looked at the book, I would invite you to look at the bibliography page, please. And that will answer... Well, I have looked at the bibliography page, <laughs> and it is a four-page, blank, four blank pages, but the first page is called Me. So that, <laughs> so that is what gave me the clue. That, ah. they, that these were probably your own aphorisms. I do, I do congratulate you. What is an aphorism? An, an aphorism is a pithy, uh, short, usually one-liner, and possibly with a, with a touch of wisdom in it. Why do you, where did you get this love of words? Mother's milk? Um, my, you, well, my goodness, are you psychic? <laughs> my mother, well, actually was quite psychic, but she, um, she was a wonderful, very gifted linguist, brought up in the, in the wars in Europe, so trilingual. She wanted to pass that on to me, so I, after hitchhiking over Europe, I spent my first gap year in Austria, became bilingual in German, spent my second gap year in... Italy became bilingual, nearly bilingual in Italian. And then I did Russian and all sorts of other things and got a, sco a European scholarship. You would have become trilingual if you... So, done. yeah. So my, that, in fact, the, the quickest way to learn your own language, in my view, is to learn another language because you're constantly searching for the more juste. You see, a lot of us started off doing Greek and Latin, but you managed to do German and Italian, which is uh, interesting. And, in indeed. And, now, I want, you to, I want to ask you... Um, you mentioned uh, that you have thought diaries. You told me on the phone you have thought diaries. Yes. And these have been a source of raw material for you. Is that yeah. right? What I mean by thought diaries is instead, instead of doing what I did... Oh, wonderful. That's instead of doing what I did before and um, just saying, you know, I went to Tesco's and bought peanut butter instead of margarine, and looking back 20 years to those, they're so boring. I thought... F I thought... No. <laughs> and then I thought, then I had a play, Commanding Voices, my first, yeah. step, my first produced stage play, which had a five-week one in Hampstead called Commanding Voices. And um, when I reread it, there were four one-liners in the play um, that I thought, well, for goodness sake, why do I have to write a whole play to get four aphorisms? Why don't I do them neat? And that was the start 20 years ago. Of my of my effort. It took me a week, less than a week, to write the book. But that week could not have had me write a book had I not done twenty years hard, as you as you were saying, Stanley, hard work honing my craft. And it's interesting this because I can actually, as I was saying to Deirdre the other day, I can date my aphorisms by their mm. quality. The That's early one, the, I'm sure you, the early ones need need work. The later ones much less work, and I can almost. Take, say to the year when I wrote it, by its quality. It's extraordinary. And that is, that is the sort of chart of my progress over those 20 years. Do you polish your aphorisms? Do you know, you all work the, on all them. All the time. All the time. All the, I never stop. Can you tell us about your American lecture tour? Oh, that was fun. Um, I, I cut my teeth in the Cambridge... Were you at Cambridge? No, I was at Oxford. Right. What? Well, well, we, uh, Sorry I'll, about that. I'll, I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you. <laughs> I, <laughs> I cut my teeth in uh, at the Cambridge Union, the deb debating union. Were you in the debating society at Oxford? I was. I never was president. At the time, so I'm sad to say. Right. Anyway, I went on an American lecture tour, and that was great fun. And we haven't time to say much, but one thing I will, one current I'll pluck from that one mm. was a lovely old lady came up to me, and she said, "Mr. Edison, 
this is the most, this is the only time all the lectures I've been listening to, this was the Live Long and Like It Club, in all the lectures I've listened to, that when I haven't gone to sleep. <laughs> that's good. I've, you know, I've never forgotten that. No, it's good. Now, what about your career in the Foreign Office? Well, you, uh, I'm only put, mentioned that because your son is Foreign Secretary. Really? Did you, did you not know? Oh, well, I have news for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, may I, may I pay you a compliment? He's a very good Foreign Secretary, I want to tell you this. May I pay you a compliment? May Go I pay on. you a compliment? And say that somebody said you looked younger than your son. Wow, wow, wow. Thank true. you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, while you assimilate that, can, would you mind, Wolfley, if I ask you a question? We're all dying to ask you, to, right. to interrupt my, my own interview. Um, you're a Remainer. Boris is a Brexiteer. Brexiteer is that, uh, um, did, this cause family, did this cause family ructions on the scale of the Milliband family? Hey, ho, this is your show. I'm oh, sorry. This is, <laughs> no this com is, no this, comments. This is your, this is your <laughs> show. You, you, okay. And by the way, anybody who wants to know what I think about Brexit can read my new novel, which is called <laughs> Compromat. <laughs> but I, you got a double pitch tonight. And double pitch, treble pitch. <laughs> well, listen, I think that you have done a most fantastic job, and I'm absolutely fascinated by, by your, your output here, because if I think of Oscar Wilde, you know, and if you think you know, the sort of things which he said, die, that's the last thing I'll do, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But you say to yourself, a man might deliver himself of 20, 40, 60, but you have got 300 in here, and, and to hear you speak, this is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> now, sorry about the tip of the iceberg. Now, you could say, um, <laughs> it's probably the first person who said this is the tip of the iceberg was, was an aphorism, but no, but that's amazing. You see, I am amazed by this. And what got you, what's put you, is this, is this, has this been your main literary form so far, apart from the play you mentioned? No, I'm a journalist, I'm a playwright. I'm the, I mean, I've only been doing this for the last 20 no, but years. No, what about in terms of published uh, purely books? Purely as a hobby on a bus. What about in terms of published books? Um, I have contributed to one or two books. But okay, but this is the... This is my first proper book. Fantastic chaps. I mean, I, I think it's just absolutely Thank wonderful. You. Look I? at this, I'm going to open this at random. Oh, do, yes. And, and I'm going to read out <laughs> at random. What I'm going, to, I'm going to shut my eyes and put my finger on something. Oh, I do like this one. I already knew this one. Cremation stops you taking your secrets to the grave. Yes, good. You see, this is, this is a man who's got real, real style. Uh, may, may, I, may I be allowed to add yeah. one to that? Yeah. Um, a, happy life is to, a happy death is to die for. <laughs> I, liked, I like peeing is relieving. You, do you like that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I thought that was good. <laughs> I didn't know of your interest in scatology, but we'll, we'll, we'll no. pass on that. Well, that's not scatological. Oh, no, well, it's near, near to it, isn't it? I, I don't know where the bodily organs live, but they're quite close. They're well, not all I scatological. Think they're <laughs> now, listen, um, I'm going to ask you an, another one. Before you do, do you mind if I interrupt myself and just no. respond to your previous question, which I didn't answer? The Foreign Office. I, yeah, that's I, it. I've forgotten yeah, about I, that. Yeah. I had a junior consultancy at the Foreign Office when I was in my, I think, my late 20s. So that answers your question. You're not going to say more about this junior well, consultancy? That was all. Well, would you like me to? Have you got time? No, I haven't got time. No. Not, not as such. But I, thought you might, I, I thought you might have mentioned that you were a spy or something like that. No, you no, no. You no, weren't. No, 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 no. I haven't got the makings of a spy. Were you? Were you ever? Were no, you this ever, is your show, no, as, I said, no. as I said before. Um, <laughs> Remember, I'm a journalist. I can't resist. I think it's a, it, 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 it's, it's a brilliant book, and I want to know how um, you have this huge following on, on social media. How do the people know that you've written this book? Oh, well, this is a story here. That's a very good question. Um, well, it's one of the ones you gave me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you, would, you wouldn't guess. <laughs> no. I thought uh, I'd better ask one or two of the ones you gave Well, it's very, very decent of you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, to answer your question, um, I had no idea that my private hobby would ever become public. Had it become, pu this, had it become public, I mean, I, had I wished for it to go public, I would have started publishing after two, three, four years. But I never published a word for 20 years, and it never occurred to me to do so, any more than it occurs to most of us to publish our private diaries. Why would we? The, this was a private diary my thoughts, and it's a little bit scary sort of sharing all these private thoughts with, with the general public. And I came to it via two stages, which actually answers your last question about Twitter. Friends, I've been, I can't tell you the pressure I've been under for 
last 10 years, mm. including from Giles Brandreth, who sadly is in Edinburgh tonight, um, and to, to publish. And I, I resisted this because it's a private hobby. I didn't want to make any money from it. And so in the end, I ended up going to Twitter because my then agent said, Robert, you've got to raise your profile in the social media, in social media. Mm -hmm. And I, to my amazement, they gained immediate traction. And I've now got 33,000 followers on Twitter. And then it was suggested by one of my team, since you asked what my team had contributed, one of them said, Robert, you should um, try Instagram. So a, few, a, few, a couple of months ago, I think it was, I, went, I started on Instagram. And to my complete amazement, um, I've got, now I've got 14,000 followers. And everybody said, well, this is a book. You know, um, aphorisms um, are, not, uh, are not to everybody's taste. They are classed by publishers at the bottom of the league as reference books. Um, so the challenge for me was to break the mold, which this clearly has, if it's a double bestseller on, yeah. on, on the night. It clearly has broke. Well, we know, because there was a huge delivery to the warehouse. It, it just went. So we had to get more. So it's obviously going to sell. Um, but I, I thought, I thought um, well, we'll put, put our toe in the water and see, see what happens. So equally to my amazement, this book also seems to be doing very well already. Does that answer your question well, about you Twitter? Mind, will you mind tweeting then, saying, here I am being interviewed by Stanley Johnson, author of Compromat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well if, you, if, you, if you're nice to me, I might consider I am being it. nice to you. I mean, extremely nice to you. I think it is you are, actually, you're, you are. I, I am. I tell you what, I think it is, it is stunningly good, this, you see. Um, humility is to eat the egg that's thrown at you. You have obviously spent a lot of time thinking. I have. Less is more, but it takes longer. Yeah, I think, you know, I can see... <laughs> Life is too short to rush. Life is too short for the house, why not? Yeah. Well, remember... Chris, Life is too short for the house. Chris, you've got to, to come and take over from me, because malheureusement, I have to move on. Yeah, I know. I know, I know but Chris know. is coming to take over. Uh -huh. And I want to say something to you, yes. Robert. Yeah. This, you know, you, you, you've, got, you've got a name, um, which is Edison, mm. and you're being published by Filament. Yes, you I know. Oh, you, 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 you got it. Yeah. Now, how now, do you fix that? Well, I, well yes. Um, uh, maybe Filament can take over. Chris is... Look, chaps I'm, and ladies, I'm sorry, I do have to go, because I've got to go and... Whoops. I've got to go and... Somewhere else, that's it. Dining with your son? Or I've, got go, I've got to go somewhere else. Uh, but I, you only rang me up yesterday saying if uh, I could, I know, I, could, I, know, I, could I, do. I do this. But I, so I have really, made every effort. To I'm get so it. grateful, Stan. You've done a fantastic no, been job. been thrilled. And now you can listen to the publisher. Stanley Jensen! <laughs> <laughs> this is the book. <laughs> <laughs> is that my book? Is that my book? No, 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 it's his book. <laughs> Uh, Robert, have I a thought, seat. Stanley, I thought this was my show. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, have a seat. Have a seat. Um, May I just say before you start? Please do. Um, that um, it just reminded me that this man here, I know he's my publisher, and I know that the bulb on the spine of the book looks fantastic against Robert Edison and the bulb. It's an extraordinary synchronicity, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and I like it a lot because Ed, my. Um, we're doing DNA tests at the moment. I may or may not be related to the Edison, you know, Edison light bulb. Yeah, and there you have on the spine of the book a light bulb, yeah, which I doesn't belong to me, it belongs to you. And I'm worried about you, Chris. I feel a little bit threatened by you because whenever I ring Chris, he comes up with an aphorism and I see him as a potential rival. And I think things have come to a pretty pass, haven't they, when, uh, when your own publisher becomes a rival? Uh, if, if your book is uh, just the tip of the iceberg, could it be said that, you've, uh, that this is a titanic achievement? Oh, well, you, you, I take you see, I rest my case. <laughs> you see, he can do it quicker than I can when he's, when he's pushed. The thing that um, uh, amazes me is um, the sheer body of work that you've created. Uh, to, to have 30,000... 33. 33,000 um, is, is truly amazing. But something that you don't know at the moment um, <laughs> is that um, you are currently being broadcast worldwide, live at this moment, on Twitter. 
thanks to uh, Tony. Well, I don't have the password. I didn't uh, bring it with me. Uh, no, but uh, we, we have ways of making things happen. Well, that's brilliant. And, uh, so uh, you, you are broadcasting to the world at the moment. Really? And, um, Will they understand? I, I doubt it. But uh, uh, t Tony is very, uh, very carefully adjusting the camera to accommodate uh, uh, the fact that I require a wide-angle lens, which is uh, very kind of him. Well, that's um, wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, That's very good news, yeah. Chris. But um, uh, so uh, you know, t to have achieved achieved that and achieved one, one, and two in the three categories on Amazon, is it not a bad day's work for you? Well, it may be one, 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 but by the time we finish tonight, I'll be very it's surprised. Only got about one all. place. Well, I'll be a triple, triple bestseller. First, we had the the literati, and that was followed by the twitterati, and we now have the afferati. Afferati. <laughs> Afariti. Uh, that as well, yes. Don't let facts get in the way of a good story. Um, <laughs> so you see how quick he is? I, I'm, I'm worried, I'm worried. <laughs> so um, this, this, is, uh, this is your first book. What are your plans for, uh, for future titles? Well, I don't know. Um, if this book does take off and goes viral, which it looks to be doing almost before time, rather like Twitter and Instagram did, I'm beginning to get the message, which, um, I mean, I had written those aphorisms, Chris, in, 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 on the assumption that when I die, um, they would be chucked out into the nearest uh, bin, yeah. along with my love letters, you know? But uh, I'm, I'm amazed that I seem to be monetizing them now. I, I still can't uh, yeah. quite, quite um, absorb this. Mm. Is there something that um, you would like to finally share with, um, with our audience uh, who are live here today and the rest of the galaxy that uh, is tuned in at this moment to your every word? And before we move to Q&A. Yeah, before, before we move to Q&A, &A, yeah. I wanted a book, as I told you before, that I could read for the reasons I gave you before on bus, tube, as is on the back cover, I think, on bus, tube, private jet, or loo. And um, I think it meets that criterion, but there are implications to anyone thinking of buying it. Can you see what those implications are? Um, I need one copy for at home, yeah. a second copy for when I'm traveling, and when I don't want to get into a heavy book, I just want to be light, something very light while I'm in a queue at the bus stop, just to sort of, you know, in, so I can enjoy waiting for the bus and not be bored and saying when the bloody when's the bloody bus coming, have that. So that was the second use for your trap for your briefcase if you're men for your handbag if you're ladies, and the third use. Um, I may be wrong, Chris. Am I right in thinking that Christmas is on the, on the horizon? Allegedly, yes. Allegedly, yes. I mean, it would this book actually? Time and again, people have told me, not just my sister, whom I take with a pinch of salt. Um, have told me that this would make the ideal Christmas gift. So those of you who aspire to the, having a golden ticket, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would suggest you consider, no pressure, no pressure at all, that you consider buying three copies for those three purposes, for travelling, for home, and for Christmas. And if you only have one friend in the world, then you'll only buy one copy for your friend. But you might have more than one friend. I leave the rest to you. Robert, you have um, had a very exciting day. You've achieved um, many, many um, uh, things on this one day. It's um, to have uh, reached the top selling spot on Amazon, to have reached the world um, at your book launch with the live broadcast, uh, to be surrounded with uh, friends and uh, yes. fellow authors and uh, people who appreciate um, the, uh, the great language that we have and the fun that we can have with words. And uh, uh, if, um, if, if there's one thing that um, uh, is, is more important than every, anything, I think it's a love of language and sharing that love of language yes. with other people. And I think uh, you've achieved uh, all of those tonight, mm -hmm. and I congratulate you, and uh, I welcome you to do the same. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Edison.